So these are the brand new Favero Osceola Pro RS pedals, and this will not be a long or complicated in-depth review. That's because these pedals are virtually identical to these pedals that were released about a year and a half ago. These being the Favero Osceola Pro MX pedals. In fact, all they did was take the spindles out of these SPD pedals and stick them into SPD SL pedal bodies. It is as simple as that. And even Favero themselves will tell you as simple as that. In fact, so simple, you can do it yourself if you want, but we're probably getting ahead of ourselves. So then what about the pricing? Well. Here is the pricing on the screen right there. Notable on this chart is there's basically three different versions you're looking at. Uh, number one is a dual-sided version. That's what I have here. You have two power meter pedals. Uh, number two is the single-sided version. In that case, you have one power meter pedal and one dummy pedal. There's no electronics in it. And then the third thing that you see there is the upgrade option, where if you bought the single-sided one, you wanted to upgrade it to a dual sensing one later on, you can do that. That's pretty much the same as all power meter companies out there. In fact, speaking of pricing and money in general, this video is definitely not sponsored. You might see a lot of influencer stuff today about these pedals. This isn't one of them. I'm going to tell you what's good about them, what's bad about them, and all that fun stuff. I don't accept money from any of the companies I review, and this is no exception. In fact, because Severo launched their web shop like a day early, I even already went and bought my own set of pedals uh, to replace these loaner pedals. So these can go back to them, and the new one should show up in a few days that I bought with my own cold, hard cash. So if you are finding this video interesting and useful, just simply watch it all the way through. That is the only thing the YouTube gods care about, and it really helps with the channel and the video quite a bit. So the very first thing to know about these pedals compared to the existing ASIO pedals is number one, they got rid of the pod. That pod that you see there, it's gone. All those components are miniaturized and stuffed inside the middle of this pedal spindle. Additionally, number two, if you had the Osseo Maduo Shi version, that was the Shimano version for SPDSL, uh, where you basically had to kind of put it together yourself afterwards, that's now gone. You just simply buy this pedal. It's all pre-done for you. You don't have to do anything else. And with that, you get a standardized Q factor. So the older Duo Shi pedals had a much longer Q factor. Q factor is roughly speaking your stance distance uh, between these two pedals. If they were mounted like this, uh, how far those two pedals are apart, it's the same kind of component, each different pedal. Uh, now, a lot of people talk about Q factor, doesn't really matter all that much because every single one of the bikes you have has different Q factors. A mountain bike has different Q factors than a road bike, a different Q factors than a gravel bike, different Q factors than an indoor bike, different Q factors than a computer bike, you name it, all of them different Q factors and you probably never notice. But nonetheless, if you did notice, they are now standard road Q factors for these SPDSLs. Next, they increase the battery claim slightly from 50 hours to 60 hours. In the past, the 50 hours in the Asomo Duos, now it is 60 hours. Now it does have a rechargeable battery inside. You can see the little charging uh, connectors right there on the side of it. Uh, and you use this dual clip system to go ahead and charge these up. One interesting change though, coming from the Pro MX series, is that while it is the exact same clip as the past, uh, now it's a USB-C clip, at least the part that you plug into the long cable, uh, as opposed to micro USB. They got a lot of flack last year when they announced a micro USB charging clip, uh, but now it is fully USB-C. Next, as part of this new spindle design here, the same again, spindle design is on these pedals here, you've now gained platform center offset as part of the larger cycling dynamic suite. So cycling dynamics is something that originally started off on the Garmin uh, vector pedals and then the rally pedals and so on, but Favero also adopted it a number of years back, but not quite all the same metric. So they had the core metrics in the past, like C and standing time and some of the other bits there, but never platform center offset because the strain gauges weren't aligned that way, but now they do with this newer series of spindle. And then last but not least, as I mentioned earlier on, you can now swap the the pedal spindle between the different pedal body types, or at least the two pedal body types that Favero is supporting right now, which is the SPDSL road pedal, and then the SPD uh, gravel mountain bike or whatever you want. And of course, you don't have to use this on gravel or mountain bike. You can use this on the road just fine. I've put plenty of miles on the road on these pedals as well. You just do you. It doesn't really matter as to where you ride your bike. Now, let's briefly talk the rest of the specs, kind of the standard specs, if you will. They were right there. Those are all the specs. I don't need to read them out for you. You can read them. They're all pretty much what you'd expect. Again, the batteries I mentioned earlier on claim 60 hours. That seems about right in my testing. And then the accuracy claim there, plus or minus 1%. We'll get into the accuracy claims a little bit later on. In fact, the only 
two changes you're really going to see from this pedal is number one being the stack height down to 10.5 millimeters and then the pedal weight down to 123.5 grams per pedal mind you that is virtually identical to shimano's ultegra uh, pedal the reference pedal if you will so really really super impressive there still a little bit shy of the dura ace by about eight or ten grams i think uh which is mind-boggling they can be almost identical to that yet uh have all the electronics of a power meter inside of it okay so let's talk about what's inside the box here is the box inside you will find your pedals depending on whether you got the dual sided or single sided version you'll still have two pedals in there after that you can notice a charging cable uh, including those connectors on there uh, those connectors actually do remove so if you want to go ahead and put them on your own usb-c cable you can do that if you want to you will also see shimano spd sl cleats in there uh, two of those you will see a little bit of the grease kit in there to properly install it uh, and then some paper junk that you're probably not going to read to install the pedals you will use a handy dandy pedal wrench at that point they're on your bike it is as simple as that as with all power meter pedals you want to really kind of crank them down a fair bit so that they're really locked on there if you do a couple sprints like just three to four sprints for like 10 seconds five ten seconds at most that'll go ahead and finish the job for you now the first time you use them you will need to connect the cable to wake them up they basically go into sleep mode while they're in the package uh, and then after that you can go ahead and use the updated favero app to configure them. The main thing you're looking to configure here is your crank length. On power meter pedals, it is super important to set that crank length correctly. You will find that on the inside of the crank arm. Uh, it's listed on every crank arm out there. For example, 170 millimeters, 172.5, etc. Whatever it is, you just gotta set it, otherwise your power meter will be inaccurate. At this point, you're almost ready to go. You're now gonna grab your bike computer, any bike computer you want, any watch you want. It doesn't really matter. You can go ahead and pair it up either via AMP Plus or Bluetooth Smart. However, However, on AMP Plus, there is more data. And additionally, on AMP Plus on Garmin devices, there's even more data. Uh, that's because Garmin supports a cycling dynamic standard, something that was passed a couple years ago now, and only Garmin has really utilized that versus Wahoo and others haven't bothered to implement it. As a result, if you want all the cycling dynamics data, you're gonna need to use some sort of Garmin device to capture that. Uh, Wahoo will capture your total power data, your cadence, as well as your left right balance, but they won't capture your pedal smoothness, torque effectiveness, your platform center off tonight you're standing seated of time and all the other things from there you go out and ride you're going to see the data on your screen depending on what you've configured on your bike computer uh, so for example by default you probably see power in there and cadence in there but you could add all the cycling dynamics fields like you see here as well uh, this is on the cycling dynamics page on the garmin edge 1050 but it's basically the same on pretty much all garmin devices over the last like decade or something like that and of course there's also power derived fields for example 10 second power smoothing or 30 second power smoothing or watts a kilogram those are all things that your head unit your bike computer will calculate on the fly it's also worthwhile noting you can use the vero app as well to see data from the pedals uh, live data if you want to including their cycling dynamics data shown directly on there at the end of the ride you'll see all the stats you would see normally on your bike computer except with additional power stats again to kind of harp on the point here if you do have a garmin bike computer you will see more stats you'll see all the cycling dynamic stats like you see right here on the screen those are all cycling dynamic stats versus on wahoo you're going to see your total power your cadence and your left right balance and and that's it and that's fine if i think about how often i actually bother to look at cycling dynamic stats it's uh, like never i just it's not not something i do but yeah you do you now, as i mentioned earlier on one of the advantages of the new spindle system you can swap them between pedal body types so you can go from here to here or vice versa because again for the 50th time it's the same spindle uh, so to take it out of this one right here grab yourself a allen key just simply go like this we're just gonna do this in real time to show you how quick and easy this is here we go take the cap off and then we're gonna go this way to loosen it there we go i'm holding the back of the pedal that little cap pops out all it is is this little cap right there that's it and then watch the magic will happen Whoop that for spindle and then you can buy pedal bodies from Favero directly uh, you can buy for example a spd pedal body and then simply do the exact same thing you see it looks exactly the same there uh, and you just simply swap them back and forth it is as simple as that also noteworthy by the way let's say for some reason you don't like the color red i don't i don't know who wouldn't like the color red if that's the case you can just go ahead and f uh, you can go and off to favero.com and get yourself this little piece right here it also comes in black now so you can swap this out if you want to and uh 
make an all back pedal. Let's talk about accuracy. Okay, let's start off first with an indoor erg workout, then an indoor simulation mode workout, and then a couple of outdoor rides of varying funness. First off, this structure workout right here, you can see very, very close. Uh, now this is compared against the Justo 2 trainer. Uh, in that case, it has a little more power smoothing to it, which is why it looks a little more steady uh, versus the Favero pedals are a little more wobbly, but that's normal because that's actually showing you what your real power is. Uh, most smart trainers have a bit more smoothing applied to it versus most power meter pedals give you a bit more of the, the raw feedback, if you will, and we see that right here. What's most notable, though, is that for all of these portions of this workout, as we zoom in and out, you'll see that things are virtually identical. In fact, if we go down to uh, the mean max graph right here, you'll see they're very, very close, with only a little bit of difference as we go up that graph, mostly because that little bit of variability there on the power meter pedals uh, is producing slightly different numbers at the top end, but everything down below that is within just a couple of watts. And if we look at cadence as well, you see those are almost and if you look at cadence, you'll see those are virtually identical as well. Next up, going to a simulation mode workout. Uh, now, this one here is a lot of moving, and now we're going on to the literally the move bike. Uh, so get that moving, moving. But since it's not an erg workout, it means I'm controlling that intensity the entire time. And if we look and zoom into a couple of these sprints here, you'll see they are identical, like within one to two watts in most cases, which is mind-boggling for both of these players to be that close. Uh, I just published my written review about the move bike. If there's some interest, let me know in the comments and I'll also publish a video review as well. Uh, essentially it's a bike that moves and leans and whatnot, but more importantly, crazy good power meter accuracy on that bike. And you see that here throughout this set, really just matching these pedals like spot on across the board. Next, we got this 90K ride right here. Uh, again, if you look and zoom into almost every section here, you'll see that it is virtually identical to the SRAM Force Access uh, that I had in this particular bike. Very, very close across the board, except a couple interesting segments. Uh, so there's two sections here, and this brings up a fun little quirk I've seen occasionally on SRAM's later generation, newer generation, newest generation of power meters, where when you stop, you see in each of these cases here, I had stopped at a stoplight or whatever it was for about a minute or so, uh, and it's doing an offset on that particular power meter incorrectly. Uh, SRAM calls out their magic zero offset systems designed to keep things always correctly uh, zeroed, but in this case, it doesn't. And the only way to fix it is to know that your power is crazy low, as you can see right here, compared to the actual power, and then to stop pedaling for a couple seconds, and then it clicks in and fixes it. Uh, in theory, it'll fix it automatically after a little bit of time, but as you can see here, it's not a problem with Favero. Uh, and it's something I'm meaning to dive into more. I see it like maybe once a month, maybe a couple times a month, depending on the scenario. And it's only when I've stopped and still have a foot clipped in that it does this. Uh, but point is though, at the end of the day, the Favero pedals are not showing that. And I've never seen that on this set of pedals um, or on these sets of pedals. And that's one thing to note is I've got so much data on these spindles, I'm talking like a year and a half, almost two years, I think of data on these power meter spindles uh, and just seeing zero issues with this particular spindle design. And then finally, let's look at one more outdoor workout here. Uh, this this one is actually from just a couple hours ago, uh, up and down to the mountains. And let's just go backwards and look at the mean max graph first to look at how close these two are across this entire line here. We're talking just a handful of watts uh, across the entire ride. Uh, really, really impressive performance all the way up into the sprint side of it, but also more importantly, those longer sections here, we're talking five, 10 minute power are literally like a watt and a half apart, which is absolutely bonkers. Still, if we look at the actual power meter graph from this particular ride, they're just a couple watts apart, which is really, really impressive. Again, no issues here on power meter accuracy on the spindles, and I could beat this to death, but there's really no reason to. Again, it's well proven at this point that this spindle design shared by these two power meter pedals is very, very good. Okay, so where are we overall? Well, simply put, like, these are the pedals to buy. Yes, there are differences between something like these and the Garmin Rally Series pedals uh, in two core ways. Number one, the battery life of these is essentially half the battery life of the Garmin Rallies. That's like a factual statement there. Uh, the Garmin Rallies have coin cell batteries. These have rechargeable batteries. That is a bit of a preference thing, like almost political preference, if you will. Favero would argue there's less chance of dropouts and whatnot on their totally sealed battery design. And that's true, but at the same time, that's also a relatively solved problem. It hasn't been a problem on Rally, and it's been solved on the Garmin Vector 3s like half a decade ago or something. So I don't really see that as an issue anymore. Instead, what's probably far more relevant is simply the price, right? I mean, these are a couple hundred bucks cheaper than Garmin's pedals, and they work just as good. It's 
it's frankly as simple as that. And replacement parts for these are also far cheaper from Vivero. For example, a replacement pedal body is 49 bucks versus Garmin. It's 129 to 199 bucks, depending on what you're looking at. And the same goes for many other parts on that accessories list as well. Ultimately, when it comes to pedals I bought over the last year and a half, I bought a number of sets of these pedals here because they just work and they're affordable and they do everything I want them to do. As simple as that. With that, hope you found this video interesting and useful. If so, give it a like down the bottom or subscribe for plenty sports technology goodness. With that, have a good one.